G'day folks, my name's Ashley and today we're going to do a flight from Indy Metro to Terre Haute in Indiana. It's actually not that far away, so I'll tell you what, we'll just get started right now. So I'll just pop the brakes off and we'll just put the power up and here we go. And if our pressure's increasing, RPM's increasing, aircraft's moving, runway's still clear. And airspeed is alive. Looking to rotate at 71 knots. There we go, 71, let's pull back. Okay, nice and gentle. Okay, we have a positive rate of climb. Speed's below 112. Runway's out of sight. Gear up. And pull about back to 25 inches, 25 up in. 25, 25. And raise the flaps. And I'll just turn the pumps off. Left fuel pump off. Fuel pressure's still good. Right fuel pump off. Fuel pressure's still good. Alright. I'll just make a left hand turn and climb out overhead the field before I start heading towards the Brickyard VOR. Uh, we're climbing to 6,400 feet this morning. Should be at 100 knots. Good idea, I'm a bit slack on the speed there. 100 knots is the cruise climb in the uh, Duchess. Which, if you have an engine problems, engine failure or something like that, if you're at, at 100 knots, you can still have time to react before it drops down to 85 knots, which is your best rate of climb single engine. And continue to put the throttle forward to keep it at 25 inches, because it's going to continue dropping as we continue climbing. And we'll just take another time, it's uh, 8.03. Uh, the Class Charlie Airspace at Indianapolis, the top of it is 4,800 feet, I believe. Just hang on, let's check my sectional. Yep, 4,800 feet is the top. Uh, about 8 miles from the Brickyard VOR on this route is when you actually enter the Class Charlie Airspace, but since we're above Class Charlie, we actually don't need a clearance. The uh, top of it was 4,800 feet, so we're just passing 5,000 now, so we actually technically don't need a Class Charlie Airspace clearance. But you'd still give a approach call, just give them a heads up to let them know what you're doing. Just as a courtesy call, even though you're not going to enter their airspace. But going above their airspace, you still need to have ADSB. So in this particular case, I'm pretending this aircraft has ADSB on board. The throttle is fully forward, so that's the maximum manifold pressure I can get now. 1,000 feet to go. Anyway, uh, let it accelerate past 140 before I pull the power back. And actually, I'll close the cow flaps. That'll help decrease the drag a little bit. The cylinder hand temperatures will start, will start to rise as well. Alright, we're over 140, so I'll pull it back to 2300 up here. And just while I'm approaching the, the Navade, I actually just stick it on heading mode instead of tracking by the VOR because the VOR gets quite confused within the cone of confusion, just overhead. And with this altitude, it should indicate about 0.9 DME and it'll read 00, 0 on the GPS because GPS is obviously more accurate. As you see, the numbers will actually differ the closer we get to it. But it's essentially a straight line from uh, Indy Metro to Terra Hort. It's just the Brickyard happens Brickyard VI just happens to be right in line. It's quite a simple flight actually. 
and the airport off to our right, um, which is just past the BMR. Which will be passing over in any second, see the cone of confusion, going crazy. Yep, okay, so we've already passed it. There we go, there's the needle going crazy, past passage, crazy speeds, 0.9, back to 0.1, numbers are increasing again. So that would mean the airport on the left there is, I think it's called Hendricks County? Yep, Hendricks County, Graham. But uh, there is apparently some good burgers at Terra Hort Airport, so that's what this flight is all about. And then obviously when the cash flows back, you've got full-time work again, I'll be renting aircraft again and actually doing these flights in real life. In the Cessna 172. I'm afraid there's no duchesses available for rent in the whole Indianapolis area that I'm aware of. If there are, please feel free to let me know. So I love flying a duchess. Great, great aircraft. The only twin I'm familiar with in the area is for the flight schools I'm able to go to uh, is a Baron and it requires a high performance sign off and I actually don't have that yet and I've not flown the Baron. The Duchess is the largest twin I've flown. And I really enjoy flying the Duchess. It's actually quite an easy aircraft to fly, a very forgiving aircraft. Great trainer, slow for cruising as you can see but it's a good transition from a single engine to multi-engine aircraft and uh, I highly recommend it actually for an aircraft to transition to twins. The Seminole is almost identical to this aircraft. The only difference is with the Seminole, you only have the one exit on the right hand side, you don't have a door on the left, that's where the panel switches are. And I actually don't like the idea of having only one door, I prefer to have two doors. They're the same engines, this, the body is virtually identical. Uh, I think the weights are pretty similar, weight limits are pretty similar. So, uh, As you can see we're going to, from the Brickyard VOR to the Terra Hort VOR, which is not far away from the actual Terra Hort airport. I think it's a matter of maybe four or five miles away to the northeast of the airport. So I'm going to start my descent. I'm going to plan to be at Patton Altitude at the Terra Hort VOR. So Patton Altitude is about 1600 feet. Uh, we need to lose about 5000 feet approximately based on our current altitude at about 500 feet a minute. So it's about 10 minutes plus I had one minute so that's 11 minutes. So at 11 minutes we're going to start our descent at 500 feet a minute and that'll require me to pull the manifold pressure back to about uh, we'll try 19 inches we'll leave the, the uh, RPM where it is lower the nose and we'll get about 500 feet a minute and the speed will be pretty much the same as what it is at the moment which would in turn keep our ETA about the same uh, you need to get a clearance to enter Terra Hort before you get to the VOR let's see Terra Hort airport You probably need it about three or four miles before you get to the VOR. But if you get it about, I don't know, ten miles from the VOR, you should be fine. If I get it kind of a beam that town, you essentially overfly the town of Brazil, that's probably a good time to get the clearance right there and then. So you tune in, get to the ATIS right now, which is pretend that's information alpha, they're going to use runway 23, so it's essentially a straight in for us. 2992 is our right time to set English, so we'll go with that, pretend that's the ATIS. And when we're over the town of Brazil, which will be well into our descent by then, uh, we'll get that clearance. <coughs> uh, so that our descent in about a minute, 45, uh, minute, 45 seconds. That should be Putnam County Airport, there on the left, from our forward left. Another place for great burgers, a restaurant at the field. I have not been there in real life, however it is in my $100 hamburger book, which I will be flying there in real life once the cash flow is back. In the meantime, I'm just going to create them in uh, this program. Alright, we can probably get started on our descent now. So, I'll pull the power back to about 19. Should be good. And we'll go for 500 feet a minute. Oops, that's too much. And the speed's about the same, 140. Mm. And the speed picked up a little bit, that's okay. Not much though. Main thing is we're in the green arc, we're not endangering the yellow arc there. And we're going to descend down to 1,600 feet. And looking at the sectional, we should be about... Eh, 
one or two miles north of the field. So we're pretty close to on track, probably maybe not exactly, but pretty close. I'd say that's probably about two miles, maybe three. Uh, we should be about... You know, that's the railway line directly below us, actually. I think for our direct track, we should be about where that road is. But that's pretty close to being on track. So I'm pretty happy with that, that's fine. And we know where we are. And we're descending to 1,600 feet. So we're just passing through 5,000 feet now. And I can switch that DME to NAV2, which is the terahort VOR. So we'll be there in about eight minutes because we're tracking directly to it. The ground speed's 157, and GPS says we're at 158, so that's pretty accurate, pretty good. So you can rely on the, the DME when you're tracking directly towards or from it, not paralleling it. 21 miles away, very good. Passing 4,000 feet, we're looking for 1,600 feet. Once again, pulling the throttle back just a little bit, just to keep it at 19 inches. So the speed's creeping up towards the yellow arc. I don't want to exceed, get into the yellow arc there. It's for smoother operations only, and especially in summertime, you do not want to be in the yellow arc. I don't recommend being in the yellow arc anytime, because you could hit turbulence at any time, unforeseen. Well, we're past Putnam County. And the next major facility is on our left. The road will be coming, tracking in closer towards us. It's sort of paralleling our track, but it'll coming closer and we'll be overflying essentially the town of Brazil. The town of Brazil is about oh, maybe eight miles away from Nav 8. So we're showing 13.6 at the moment. That's probably Brazil there. That, that would be the road I was talking about. Terra Hort Tower, Beechcraft Duchess, Bra Alpha Bravo Chile is about 8 miles, 7 miles east of Terra Hort VOR on descent, passing 2,000 feet with the information Alpha, request airways clearance. Alright, so let's start with the uh, pre landing checks. Brakes, working there off, undercarriage. Okay, we have three greens, fuel pumps, left one, fuel pressure's good, right fuel pump, fuel pressure's good. So brakes are off, undercarriage is down, we have three greens. Uh, mixture is reach fuel selectors on, both fuel pumps are on. Instruments. Fuel quantity is good, fuel pressure is good, oil pressure is good, oil temperature is good, oil temperatures, cylinder temperature is good, and the electrical load is good. Switches are on both hatches and harnesses. Make sure you're all secure there. And put the pitch full forward. Uh, Alpha Bravo Charlie's on three mile final runway two three. Alpha Bravo Charlie, clear to land runway two three. Okay, Alpha Bravo Charlie, clear to land runway two three. Okay, this is the Duchess. BE76, guess what the approach speed is? Yep, 76 knots. Easy to remember. Cool. Uh, I'm still trying to learn how to land these things. So, bear with my landings, please. I do, be I do it a lot better in real life. I find it a lot easier in real life than in the simulator. I heavily rely on the feel of the aircraft when I'm actually flying. So that's one thing these sims are lacking is the actual feel. Maybe just a tad low, but it's not that bad. And my eyes alternate between the runway aiming point and the airspeed. Just back and forth, back and forth. I'm not worried about the center line here. Yeah, pull the power back until you're right about to touch down. Because these things do not float. The Duchess does not float like a Cessna 172. No, they do not. 
they do not. So you got to power it to the ground, really. I can retract the flaps now. Okay, so according to the sign, we're on Charlie there. Beautiful. The black background signs, otherwise, there's the taxiway you're on. The yellow backgrounds are the ones that are coming up. So they're pretty easy to read. And the red signs are the runways that are coming up. And if you're taxiing along and you can't remember if you have a clearance, no harm in rechecking. Ground Alpha Bubble Challenge, please confirm uh, we had clearance to cross runway 1432. Oh, 143. 1430. That doesn't sound right, it should be 32. Okay. Yep, uh, you cleared across Alpha uh, runway 1432. Thanks. So, yeah, if, it, if ever in doubt, always ask. There's times I've had clearances, I was given a clearance to land way out, 10 miles out, and after doing my checks and whatnot and talking with the instructor and whatnot, I, I forgot if I had a clearance or not, and I just reconfirm, just confirm, clear to land. And they, they'll tell you, yep, or no. Nah. So don't be afraid to ask to reconfirm if in doubt. I've had to do it many times while flying. All right, beautiful. All right, let's shut this puppy down. First of all, turn the avionics off. Ooh, I didn't have the other one on. Looks like we only need one anyway. Huh, there you go. Uh, mixture lean. And switches will turn off. Off, off. everything is off. Oop, off. What a beautiful little aeroplane she is. I love flying the Duchess, she's a great aircraft. Excellent trainer, good transition aircraft from single engine to multi-engine, that's for sure. They're not a complicated aircraft, very simple. I highly recommend it. If you get a chance to fly one, I, I do recommend it. They've got the cool forward folding nose gear. I think Seminola has the backwards folding nose gear. Uh, I think it looks cool having the forward, nose, uh, forward folding nose gear, but I think that's why there's a restriction on the retraction speed is 112 knots, because the gear folds forward. I think that's why, because the forward folding nose is fighting the airflow as it's retracting in flight. I don't remember the Seminole having a retracting limitation, but that's probably because the nose folds backwards. So yeah, she's a nice aircraft. Love it. And this is Terry Hort Airport, so yeah, there you go. I hope this video was insightful. I hope you learned something from it. And yeah, so if you feel like you like this video and others like it, uh, feel free to like and subscribe, all that jazz, and uh, I'll see you later. Take it easy. Thanks for watching.